there. She don't learn that in the woods. All right, to fill you guys in, I've slipped up on the edge of my yard. This deer was bedded down. I had her at full draw forever. She wouldn't stand up. I let off, got up a little closer, and finally she stood up. And you'll see the shot. Right here's the shot. You'll see her tail. She runs away. She finally stood up. When she stood up, I let one fly and wow, I mean beautiful sun every single day. Blind by this tree. There's my house, by the way, right there. Maybe this will make sure I couldn't even get to the barn. She was already down here, as you've seen through the window there. But sneaking in over here, I'm way over there. Had a deer, like, I don't know, I've walked right up on it. It's windy, as you can tell. Walked right up on that deer and don't even have a clue where it came from or nothing. It was just right underneath my feet before I knew I couldn't get drawn back or anything. But anyway, I'm going to give this, this doe a little bit. We'll go see if we can't find her. Okay, here we go. Let her lay for a while. Oh, it's been about an hour. The shot looks so good. I'm going to go ahead and go look for her. I mean, I don't think she's very far at all. Blood was looking good on the ground where I hit her there. We're gonna go see if we can't find her. This wind is still blowing like crazy, so I thought I heard her crash down there, but it's hard to tell with the wind blowing. But she's laying down here. This will be pretty sweet, right in the backyard. First kill of the 2020 fall season. And uh, wasn't even out of a tree, it's on the ground. Just kind of hard to do sometimes with a bow. Anyway, they'll stay tuned. back to Wayne County all right can you see my house in the background that's that gray looking stuff that that's the side of my house look right here on the ground okay this around Let's flip this camera around so you can see okay there's a the house that's a side of the bedroom window all that the house is right there edge of the yard edge of the woods and look at this bed it's like that all in here it's crazy there's a it's a lot of deer here a lot of deer we're gonna go down here and see if we can find her I'll 
I got the uh, trusty deer dog here. <laughs> the cracking dog. He's low to the ground. He can smell him out. <laughs> got a low rider, low rider suspension. How's that tall grass feel, bud? <laughs> Go find that deer. Go find that deer. It'd be totally awesome if he just went down there and found it. Oh, that's a trophy rock and some deer poop you're smelling. Come on. All right, we're at the site. Oh, good Lord. There I went through here. Said she'll whack. There's the blood. Half dried and hard to see. Hey, you smell that? Smell that? Find him. Where's she at? Where's she at, Luke? We'll find him. Yeah, he smells it. Cool. She went through here. Some blood on that leaf. Some good red blood right there. She went through here. here and there and she turned let's see which way she, she turned around here somewhere she, on this way um, all right. oh, we're back on track Luke I'm not the deer go get it There's some blood right there I guess she went up underneath this oh she actually turned and went this way totally opposite what I was thinking Blood there, blood. All right. There's some blood up here. Can come. There's some blood. All right. Pretty sure my arrow went all the way through, but we're only 20 yards from where I shot her. Gotta be laying up here pretty close. There's some blood. There's some good blood. Good blood. No good blood. <laughs> now look at this. Look at this. Oh man. Good eating right here. Good eating right here. Yes, sir. freezer. This is Rick with River Billy's Outdoors. Thanks for watching guys. This is going to taste amazing. We're going to take some of these back straps and smoke them up. I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys a little video. I'm going to quarter this deer up, pull the back straps out. What grind meat I have, I can grind myself, but I'm probably going to take it right down to the meat processing plant. I don't know, this deer's pretty small. I may just do it all myself here. Um, it's a little warm out, and that's why I would take it down there. It's like 65 degrees today, but anyway, stay tuned. There I am looking for my arrow. Guys, this is crazy. I shot her right back up here. Complete pass through, ripped her. But the arrow landed. I didn't even see the arrow. I saw something else instead, and the arrow setting in it. This is crazy. I've never had this happen. Look at this. There's the arrow covered in bud and it's split right here on a elk horn or deer horn mushroom or coral mushroom they've got a few different names these are actually good eating fall mushrooms this one's pretty soft i'd say that's an omen we got fresh deer meat we got fresh fall mushrooms it's pretty cool just love it absolutely love it
side by side might be totaled from a wreck I had last week. So it's not here right now. It's uh, getting an estimate done. So the oil pan's off the Jeep. The dirt has a bass boat behind it. Jet boat's over there. The car doesn't have a hitch and it's only five. So we're on the John Deere. We're gonna drag this deer out of the woods with the lawnmower. You bet. They call me redneck, white trash, and blue dog. <laughs> you bet. Look, dude. Yeah. Okay, I am not walking through that mess of crap. We're gonna come over here. I'm gonna try to set this phone up in a sense that you'll be able to see me field dress this little dough here. And man, could you ask for more of a perfect shot? Hmm, it really helps when you don't hit a pile of brush. We found the arrow, as you've seen, laying up in the middle of a deer horn mushroom, and I found a couple more deer horn mushrooms over there. Get this deer taken care of first, and then we'll go pick some deer horn mushrooms. Another day in Wayne County. Gotta love it. All right. First step, field dress one of these deer. Or any deer, any big game animal, really. I like these shoulder, well, they're not really shoulder length. They're just, they go past your elbow. These gloves here, they work great. Some of them come with the other gloves, the regular surgical gloves that come over here. Those are nice too, because um, you can rip a hole in these. As you hear that, I've got a hole already. And these are brand new. Anyway, all you're doing with these is rolling a gut pile out, so they don't have to be perfect. It's hard when you're done. Next step, still dressing deer any big game. A sharp knife. Now this is a handmade knife my dad made. Got a Damascus blade. He tooled this brass out of a solid piece of brass. It's been pinned here. This is obviously deer antler that he's worked down, actually made finger grips. And the end of it is a 30 30, or not a 30, 30 out 6 cartridge that actually goes down on the tang of the blade of the knife. He did an awesome job on this. And here's the handmade sheath he did for me. It's a Christmas gift one year, and it's uh, Kind of a ritual. I use this knife always when I'm playing deer. He's Dad's a very talented man. Um, he has a lot more patience than I do, and he can do things like this. All right. All right. So what we're doing here is um, you have to make this split by both hands, and just below the hock, you want to um, go around the genitals down there and make sure that. It's easier when you've got, my dad's actually recording now, and he's got one leg he's standing on. I've got my knee on the other. I've done it a million times by myself, um, but it's easier to field dress a deer when you have two people and someone else helping you hold the legs. Um, you'll see here in a minute, once I get everything cut loose all the way around um, to the tail, I'll be able to come up. And on the hocks, I'm going to actually split the hock with my knife blade. This is a young deer. It's very easy on a younger deer. An a old doe or, you know, a really old buck. It's a little bit more difficult to split that hock. But um, once you get it broke loose, I've, I've actually broke a knife blade one time trying to split a hock open. But you'll see here just a second when I get up to the hock and, and I'll uh, split it. Okay, I'm already cut all the way around by the tail. You're going to go right in between the hams. And you'll see where the hock comes up to a, a point. There's kind of a little ridge in there. Now I'm getting ready to split it now, actually. So, taking the tip of my knife, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to hit it, crack it. 
move up a little higher and then once I get any higher than that I want to flip my knife blade over so that I don't cut into the bladder because um, you don't want that on the meat so see there I've flipped it over and I'm just running the blade upwards until I get to the end of the hawk now it's split All right now that that's split there's uh, you'll, you'll see where the intestine comes in and everything else then you want to unzip this thing uh, just like a zipper but keep your finger over the tip of the knife blade and that keeps keeps you from poking any guts or any entrails in there that you don't want on the meat you're going to unzip it all the way up the, to the center of the chest cavity as you can see the stomach is still inflated so that's not yeah there's no problem with that that's the other reason why you want to keep that finger over the tip of that knife blade once you're split all the way up some people split these ribs I don't normally but you've got to cut this lining in here there's a uh, it's like a totally separate chamber up here you cut this lining all the way around except for the very bottom you don't have to cut it loose it'll peel loose once you get the lining cut open that's where your vitals are that's where your uh, what you should be shooting at naming at as you can see uh, the heart and the liver you want to reach up above the heart all the way up on the windpipe as far as you can reach cut that windpipe loose once you cut that windpipe loose and it some a uh, small deer like this it's hard to get both hands in there because you really need to hold it with one hand and cut it with the other but once you get that windpipe cut loose you're able to grab it and peel you'll pull down and peel everything out of there and it'll, it'll bring all the nasty and the, the blood and the vitals and the entrails all will come out as you can see here I'm peeling it and I'm peeling it all the way down and look at that it's bringing it right out all the way out the back when that's all peeled free you can raise up the deer a little bit um, I happen to have this one setting slightly uphill and drain the blood out there's the heart and the um, the lungs there and you can see where I slice the lungs and punch through right there with the broad head um, ended up double lunging her I missed the heart by maybe an eighth of an inch but she only ran 30 yards and died here I'm just kind of pulling the, the blood and bloodshot stuff out of there just moving it with my hand letting it flow out um, gravity's pulling it out so there, that's all there is to it. Huh? <laughs> Here we go. It is hard to hear. I'm going to go ahead and narrate this part as well. So, with um, almost all deer, I've, I've hung them by the back legs before. Um, I prefer to hang them by the head, if at all possible. Because then all of your blood and everything else will drain out and downward instead of collecting up in, in the roast and in, in the neck. So I'm cutting around the neck here. Cut all the way around it. And I'm just going to do kind of the opposite of what we did w when we field dressed it. Uh, my knife is a little bit dull because it's cleaned probably 15 deer and hasn't been sharpened. But I'm going right down the center of the neck to unzip it all the way down to where our separation is on the chest. Once it's down, I'm going to work around the sides. Um, and just, I'm peeling this... Uh, this hide back on the meat and you can run the edge of your blade against the hide and the meat and on uh, tighter spots and of course this again this is a young deer an older deer is going to be a lot harder to peel down like this um, you'll have some more tougher spots but uh, for the most part it it's not too bad to peel down I'm going to bring it down and peel it right down to the shoulders on both sides. Once you get it off of the neck, it'll peel a lot easier. 
now we've got it peeling we've got it coming down on both sides good um, and you always if you notice you'll see me roll that hide roll it up to where I have something substantial enough to grab a hold of and that'll make it a lot easier to to pull I had a little tight spot there I trimmed back with the knife now we're coming down nicely once we get down low enough we'll get to basically the armpits there on the shoulders when you get to those I'm getting some tight spots here working them around when you get to the armpits and you're going to run your fingers in underneath between the hide and the, the body and you peel it right down past the second joint basically the deer's knee um, or it would be the elbow I guess <laughs> anyway you do that on both sides down past the um, that joint right there the rest of the leg there's not enough meat to worry about on the rest of the leg I mean it's mostly sinew and tendon pretty tough stuff so this is where we're going to take the knife We're going to work the joint, cut that joint right across, right where the separation is between the joints. When you get that cut, you're going to cut all the tendons all the way around that joint, that leg joint, both sides and the back. Try to get all of it cut loose that you can, and then you can extend the leg and pop it with your hand and it'll pop out. What else works really good is um, some good heavy duty cable cutters, big bolt cutters. You can reach right up and, and lop both the legs off pretty easily. Bone saw will also work, but I prefer not to ever use a saw simply because you get a lot of bone fragments on the meat and that's how you get gristle and I'm just not a big fan of using a saw. I'll come all the way around both of these legs and do do them both like that once it's snapped loose so now I've got it popped do a little twist and pop action I'm gonna come right in here and cut it off completely there it's cut off there's the shoulders are free now we're going to continue on down and get this hide down off the hams just like a pair of pants Bring it right on down, both sides. There, it's stripped down the tail, and um, I actually end up popping the tail out of the hide here by accident, but it's happens sometimes, no big deal. Doesn't really uh, make any difference. Unless you're trying to save the tail for some reason. I'm gonna come down on the hams. This is a little bit different. When you come down the hams, you're going to cut this main tendon on the back side. Now, that'll allow you to flex that joint all the way up, just like we did the front legs. I'm going to cut across the joint. I'm going to cut on both sides, all the way around, uh, almost a repeat of the shoulders. Once you are cut all the way around, I'm still working on this one. Once you, you're cut all the way around, um, a good telltale here is that you'll have some joint liquid when you cut perfectly into the joint between the two joints. You don't want to be just sawing on, on bone. Um, you'll see that clear joint liquid there, and that lets you know you're, you're in the right area at that point. Once you get those bottom legs cut free, I'll do the same deal, a little twist and pop action here. And once it comes loose, you'll be hanging by a little piece of tendon. You take and you slice that tendon. And there you have it. And I didn't realize it until later, but if you look at my left thumb, that blood is my blood. That's not the deer blood. Um, I cut myself and didn't even realize it at some point. I still don't know when or where I did it. But 
later I looked down and I, I cleaned my hands and my thumb was still bleeding and, or I still had blood on my thumb and I was like what didn't even feel it nothing um so anyway kind of an interesting deal so I'm doing the same thing on the other leg on the other ham we're gonna go around that joint cut all those tendons loose work around the back side pop it a little pop and twist of course the deer just spun on me there then we cut that last tendon free I caught the deer from slapping against the tree there to keep the bark off of it there's the tail our next line of action is to come in here and take these tenderloins out and most of the time you can grab these and actually peel them out but I, I sometimes lose a piece when I do that so I like to cut down both sides of the the actual the inner loins um, tenderloins there's several words for these a lot of people call the back straps a the tenderloin which they are a loin um, but these are the true tenderloins the true inner loins here and the back straps are known as outer loins anyway I cut on both sides of these cut a little bit at the top work my fingers in around the meat and you can peel these down now if you see you're starting to lose some of it you can always reach in with the knife and pick up any of it that that's stringing out on you that that's losing you. this is by far the most tender cut of meat on the whole deer I mean these things will just melt in your mouth back straps are um, the outer loins are also really good so there's one good tenderloin just needs rinsed and uh, cooked <laughs> I may do a cooking segment on some of this deer meat too um, may do some on fish and deer and a couple different species for you guys so uh, look out for one of those to pop up All right so I'm doing the same thing on the other inner loin here I've already cut around it working my fingers in behind it peeling it bringing it down see I started to lose a little bit there so I'm picking it back up with my knife to make sure it all stays in one hunk there I've got it another clean loin it's just you may cut that like into three hunks and throw it right in the fryer I mean that is just awesome or the smoker or the oven you know there's a lot of other ways to eat deer rather than just fried deer meat that to me that's kind of bland and kind of original i like mixing it up we make deer tacos deer spaghetti deer pizza anything you would use beef for and we smoke deer loins that taste just as good if not better than any store-bought uh pork loins it's all in how you prepare things and i like to try to eat all the lean wild game meat i can um, it's way better than anything you're going to pull off the shelf at the grocery store. All right, and the shoulders come off easy, as you see there. There is no joint. I like the hips have a ball joint, and we have a, a ball joint, basically, in our shoulders. A deer has no joint in the shoulder. It's all muscle-driven. So you can cut right around, and the shoulders come right off the deer. Next thing I'm going to do is take some of this outer meat off. Um, you've got a layer of muscle that's a thin layer. It's uh, kind of tough for meat that, that I'm cutting off here. It comes down the deer's neck and onto its shoulders and back. I'm going to save pieces of this just for grind meat, and it'll go in with my burger. And since it was kind of warm this day, I did end up, what you'll see later in this video, I ended up taking this one to the processing plant as far as the grind meat. I saved probably, well, I think it cost like 40 bucks to get all my burger made and they sliced up a little fry meat out of the hams um, versus around $100 if I would have had them skin it. And I could, I can do this whole uh, part here, especially if, if I'm not trying to, you know, take my time and, and, record and show you guys <laughs> how it's done basically i could i could have quartered this deer up in five minutes probably i mean it's and it you know cut my price in half on my burger
Plus, I didn't have to drag my meat grinder out and all that. <laughs> but they add the 15% beef fat right in, and it gives the deer enough fat that you can throw it in a skillet and brown it, brown the burger just like you would beef burger, and use it in any burger application. Right now, I'm taking the back straps out. You want to cut right against the spine and run your tip of your knife along the ribs you'll feel the ribs um with your knife blade you'll actually feel them bouncing you know you're deep enough then and then you're going to come in on this side at an upward angle and cut back into your original cut towards the spine once you get that down you can grab that that whole back strap outer loin and start working it down and pull it out in one good solid piece if you go too much farther there's a separation line there you can see in the sinew the separation line between the back strap and the ribs I'm gonna work this on out all the way down to the ham and I cut it off here if you cut any farther than that down the ham you're actually cutting some of your ham out and I have taken a whole deer ham before and put in the smoker and let it smoke for about six or seven hours with a really good wild game rub and uh, some of the same similar seasonings I use on pork and used uh, hickory and pecan to smoke it and oh my goodness talk about some good meat so there's one back strap out I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side that's one thing you got to remember on on deer everything is in twos you got two shoulders two hams two back straps two tenderloins uh, two ribs and then all of your grind meat of course you're going to have just as much off one side as you do the other the only scenario where that would change is uh, shot placement damaging one part of the meat versus another so here i'm actually coming all the way down on this back strap I'm going to do the same thing all the way down to the ham and pull it out. And that blue looking sinew, when I go to cook those back straps, I'll actually slice that off. It's easier to take off after it's been frozen or at least chilled. And a lot of times you can peel most of that right off. So I'm at the top of the back strap now and I've got it coming, peeling it out, working it out. All the way to the ribs. And here we go. Here's the other back strap. Another nice piece of meat. All right, the hams. Now the hams are um, pretty simple to take off as well. You have a. It's basically the. It's, it's, it's a blade shaped bone that comes up at an angle from the spine and what goes down to the joint in the ham bone um, it's uh, the actual the pelvis of the deer so you're going to work around that as I'm doing here on the outside and spread it and around that bone you can see where my thumb is there that's the bone you want to come on the outer edge of that that blade you'll come right through there and you'll see the joint once you see that ball of the joint sticking out that's what you're going to work around is that ball joint and you can see it there i'm i'm cutting around it right now as soon as the ball is showing which you can see it well on the inside i've got the deer turned away from the camera but there it is there showing it there we come right around the ball will stay on the ham the rest of the joint and the cartilage will stay on the carcass you work that right off there's one ham now got the other ham and I'm going to trim up some of the um, some of the grind meat 
that I can get off of the rest of this deer. And that's all there is to it. Then you can go through this and you can pick some, again this is a young deer, there's not going to be a lot here, I'm going to pick some of the roast off for grind meat, maybe some of this kind of in the ponds and stuff in here, and that's going to be it, that's all your meat right there. So I've got the deer meat with me, I'm in the trusty old Pontiac, <laughs> and we're heading down to the meat plant down here. I'm gonna get some burger made. Get some more burger. We don't buy store bought beef burger. Yeah, beef fat added to our deer burger. We harvest enough deer every year that um, we don't we don't have to purchase beef burger. So all this beef scare and everything else, that's all right. We got this. Good Lord willing, we'll have another good year of harvest. And uh, so far, he's. Been pretty good to us. I spent a total of maybe 35 minutes bow hunting so far this year, and I missed one and killed one. So we're we're on the right path here with the old cow on the roof. It's actually a bull. This is the meat process plant, Piedmont processing. We're gonna take our deer in here and get some burger made. All right. Y'all need to go run back. I've got, I've just got some deer and need to make into some burger. Howdy, fellas. Uh, got some, got a deer I, I just killed. I just quartered it up. It's a real young deer. This one right here? Alright. How much there? It's a young deer. <laughs> uh -huh. I say it's a young deer. Um, it's big. Yeah, yeah, that's a monster. No, it's uh I already got the back steps and everything. All it is is the, the hands, the shoulders, and a little bit of grind meat off. I just want a burger made out of all of it. Okay. Um y'all add what fifteen percent beef fat to that or fifteen percent Okay. Rick with River Billy's Outdoors. Y'all take it.